you what the fuck. Sit down, gather around, grab yourself a cup of coffee or something. We're going to talk about the strange, bizarre tale of a scammer named Salad. So have you ever wondered what happens if you actually engage with one of these scam messages that you receive? I'm sure you've all gotten them by now. Somebody, like normally a pretty Asian-looking girl, sends you a message like, Hi, is that Mike? Or, Hi, are you so-and-so? I got your number from so-on and so forth. And if you say, sorry, wrong number, they're like, Oh, well, you know, since we're on the line, let's talk. Have you ever wondered what happens if you ride that out? Well, I did it. And I did it for a couple of reasons. Number one, I wanted to see how far it goes. Number two, I wanted to waste the scammer's time. And number three, I wanted to give you all a demonstration of exactly how it works so that you can avoid being caught out by what is known colloquially in China as the pig butchering scam, or Sha Zhu Pan. Anyway, we're going to get into it. So there I was, minding my own business, out with my family somewhere, and I got a text message out of the blue. And it read, Hi, are you Mike? I'm not sure if I've got the wrong number. To which I replied, Yes, I am Mike. I obviously want to have a little bit of fun, and I decided, hey, let's, let's see where we can go with this. She replied, Sorry, I typed in the wrong number, but I found Mike. Surprisingly, your numbers are off by only one digit. To which I replied, us mics all have similar numbers. Now, guys, I'm not going to read you the entire conversation. I'll have it up in the background for those of you who want to, you know, take a look exactly what was said. But we're going to have to skip over big chunks of this rather boring conversation because it gets very interesting later on. So after the introduction, so I told her I lived in Los Angeles, told her my kids were in college, so I've got a lot of free time. You see, I want to sweeten the pot. I want her to think she's uh, hooked a whale here, you know. She tells me that she's from Korea. In fact, she says, I'm from Korea. Settled in Corona, California, USA. Okay. And they do this in order to try and build some confidence to pretend like they're in the same area as you are, the same country, same city even at times. Because if someone's like, oh, I'm in China, you're going to think, well, yeah, okay, maybe a scam. So here's the first clue that she's lying, okay? It's very easy for me to debunk this. First, um, she asks if I've ever been to Korea, to which I say, yes, I've been on a business trip in 1986. And she said to me, the best Korean food is barbecued meat. Now, in China, Korean barbecue restaurants are incredibly popular. The majority of people think, you know, your average person on the street, when they think Korean food, they think Korean barbecue in China. And that's what it's famous for. So for her to say that immediately points out in my mind that she's probably Chinese. But I decided I'd take it a step further and actually just look at her profile because you can click on the number in WhatsApp and you can actually see who the person is. And lo and behold, in her profile there, it says, Ni hao, wo zheng zai shi yong, WhatsApp. <laughs> now, for those of you who don't know what that means, it just says, hello, I'm using WhatsApp. I'm currently using, or I'm now using WhatsApp. This is the generic message, the default message that the Chinese version of WhatsApp will put into your profile when you create your account. It's the same in English. If you don't change that message, it'll say, you know, I am now using WhatsApp. So, of course, she's Chinese. I can tell she's Chinese. She's using the Chinese version of WhatsApp, and she's sounding very Chinese to me, you know, from what she's saying. So we've already poked holes in who she is and where she says she's from. But it gets more interesting. She asked me how old I am, and I told her I was 67. Of course, you have to set yourself up as an easy target, right? An elderly person with a lot of free time and a lot of money to spend or invest. That's what I was going for. But, of course, I forgot that I had my profile picture in there, which is me, you know, a couple of years ago. But, of course, I don't look 67. And she actually asked me, like, well, you don't look 67 in your profile. So I had to make up a, a story that that was a picture of my son, who I'm very proud of, you see. And he's gone to Harvard, again, dropping these names to make her think I've got a lot of money. She tells me she's lived in America for 15 years. And I said, oh, great, if you're ever in America, I could show you around, of course, because I know she's not in America. But she replied, I am in America right now. Great, this is an opportunity for me to call her out. So I say, oh, great, let's meet up sometime. To which, of course, she makes some nonsense excuses and uh, we'll have a chance to meet later. Um, and she asks what I do for a living. Again, I do business. 
I have a business doing technical advice and risk management for financial companies. How about you? <laughs> she says she does cosmetics, retail and plastic surgery, medical institutions. I have no idea what that's supposed to mean, but that's what she does. And she says, and here's the first clue that this is a scam. I do some crypto hedging on the side. Of course, I tell her I don't know anything about crypto and sounds interesting because, of course, I want this to proceed. Um, she goes on to give me some rubbish compliments and stuff. And she says, while I invest in cryptocurrencies, I don't invest for the long term. The cryptocurrency market is so volatile right now that it's too risky to hold for the long term. I only make short trades for 30 seconds. I use the head and shoulder formula to calculate 30 seconds, increase or decrease within a certain peak to achieve two-way profit. Each profit can reach about 15% of the total assets. Now, this is she's telling me this stuff on the same day. The first day she's met me, she's already trying to set me up for a crypto scam. So now I want to move away from this whole crypto thing. I'm pretty sure this is a guy sitting in a Burmese scam office. You know, that's how they operate. The, the Chinese scammers usually cross over the border because they can actually get into trouble if they're in the borders, within the borders of China. But if they're outside the borders of China, it's free reign for them to scam anybody. As long as they don't try to scam Chinese people, because then the Chinese government actually comes after them. But anyway, I'm pretty sure I know what I'm dealing with. But let's try and see if we can figure out a little bit more, have a little bit of fun. So I start to ask her what she likes to do in her spare time. She says, in addition to traveling, I also like to do yoga, scuba diving and bodybuilding in my free time. Play golf, read a book, or analyze cryptocurrency market trends. It's a very diverse sounding person, I must say. And she continues, I've been researching cryptocurrencies for over three years, and I've accumulated some experience that I can share with you if you need to, and teach you some simple processes. I mean, come on here, guys. We've been talking for, what, half an hour maybe here? At the most, 20 minutes back and forth, and she's already offering to give me a valuable advice on, on crypto investment and stuff? If by now somebody hasn't realized this is a scam, I feel like they've lost some common sense. But that being said, I do understand how some people get sucked into this whole thing. We'll see, because it gets more complicated. So, of course, I say thank you for your generosity type thing. And she says, invest in short-term contracts. My aunt taught me. I asked her, do you have any photos of your yoga? I would love to see that. And of course, she's ready to show me a picture. Now, the interesting thing about this picture, by the way, is take a look. This person, who I'm guessing is definitely not who I'm talking to, just a picture off the internet, has an attractive woman standing in the gym holding a miracle something or other cream. So obviously somebody doing a promotion for a product like an Instagrammer or something like that. So, you know, again... Common sense. This is not who you're talking to here. But I do actually end up talking to a woman, so stick around. So, of course, I'm playing along with this. I say, wow, so pretty. She says, thank you, not bad looking. What do you look like? That's kind of bizarre for someone to say that about themselves. Yeah, yeah, I'm not bad looking. So I just got a random, like, you know, you can generate like a random looking dude with one of those AI things online. Just got a random middle-aged looking dude added a couple of filters on it to make it look real. I'm like, this is me on vacation. I'm an old man. And she says, there's no age to make friends, etc., etc. There's a good trend tonight. If you're interested, I can show you a practice. We will learn by constantly learning a uh, trial, which will help you a lot. She's now trying to get back into the cryptocurrency thing. So I say, sounds great. You seem like such a nice girl. I've got some investment money I wanted to spend again, sweetening the pot. And she keeps going on about like, yeah, let's do it. Let's do this short term thing. Um, and I'm like saying, OK, great. Sounds great. She says, because I feel friendly when I talk to you, I'm just telling you this. Sure, the market is very good these days. So I suggest you start now. Now, why is she in such a bloody rush to get me to do this cryptocurrency thing? Well, there is actually something to this. You know, this pig butchering scam has very recently received a lot of attention. And as such, it's less and less effective. People are being educated. They realize that this is a thing. And so these scammers kind of have this situation now where they don't want to dedicate too much time into trying to raise the pig, so to speak. So they try to strike fast. They try to get you to get into this crypto thing as soon as possible so they don't end up wasting their time and that they can try to find easier marks. 
So, of course, my whole role in this is I want to delay them for as long as possible. I want to keep them on the line. I want to waste their time and, of course, try to find out more in the process. The next step is that she tries to get me to create a Coinbase account. Now, I already have a Coinbase account and everybody should know that's just a way, at least in the United States, for people to buy things like Bitcoin and put them in a wallet or you can uh, convert Bitcoin. If you get sent some, you can put it into Coinbase and then, you know, you pay a fee, but you can transfer it into your bank account. And of course, I keep her on the line telling her, yeah, I'll do it tomorrow at the office and that sort of thing and do the usual nonsense. And, you know, the weird thing is she finally decides to tell me her name now after the second or third day. Um, and she's like, yeah, my name is Sarah. What's your name? Nice to meet you. Do you use Telegram? Now, here we go. Isn't that a bit weird? Shouldn't you start out by introducing your name? But now that she thinks she's really got me on the line, now let's get a bit more personal here. And now she wants to get me on Telegram. Of course, Telegram is used by these scammers big time. So I'm just like, you know what? Nah, I like to use WhatsApp. She's like, good. You're on my private WhatsApp. I'm like, cool. And then she tries to add me to her so-called private WhatsApp. Now, what's happened here, guys, is she's the initial bait, okay? You get different kinds of scammers. This is the person that goes out there and tries to find an easy mark. Once she thinks she's really onto something, she will pass you on to her colleagues, you know, they'll have a dedicated team of people who are now ready to scam someone. So she's done the initial recon, decided that I'm an easy mark, decided that I'm worthwhile, and she's now gone and added me to her colleagues' WhatsApp. And this is where Salad enters the picture. So now Sarah, has added me to her private WhatsApp. And she actually says to me, this is my private number. It will be much easier to contact me here. But I noticed something. The name at the top, her actual name in WhatsApp is no longer Sarah, it says Salad. So I say to her, hmm, your name is Salad now? That's a cool name. To which she replies, I've always been called Salad. Thank you for your compliment. What should I call you? I mean, how sloppy are these people? Seriously, first of all, she's supposed to know my name. I mean, she started our entire conversation saying, this is my private number. It will be easier to contact me here. So you obviously know who you're talking to, right? And suddenly she's changed her name too, now to Salad. These guys aren't communicating properly. This is not how you run a scam properly, seriously. I mean... Amateur hour shit at best over here. But this conversation, by the way, goes on for about two months. So I'm going to skip massive swaths of this thing because it's just the same old crap every day. I'm going to highlight the fun parts, though. So let's uh, get past the whole salad thing. I said, um, <clears throat> oh, I thought you said Sarah. Maybe I remember wrong. I am Mike. Nice to meet you. You eat dinner yet? Look, this whole have you eaten your dinner yet thing is also very much a part of uh, Chinese culture. It's very common. It's a, it's a, actually a greeting. Is Nietzsche uh, Fan Lame basically means have you eaten yet? It's a very common greeting. So I know I'm talking to a Chinese person here. I do go and look at her profile, but her profile does not have Chinese written there. So this is a little bit more professional, this person. I also must point out that the numbers that they use are American numbers. They use whatever spoofing service or they pay a service somewhere to use these numbers, but it will trick you because you as a, an American or an Australian or a Canadian or wherever you're from, they will use local numbers when they are scamming people in whichever specific country. So I tried to get to know her a little better. I asked her what she likes to do in her spare time. And she says she likes swimming, reading, and listening to music in her free time. You know, I can pretty much guarantee you that um, about 90% of people on this earth enjoy listening to music and uh, probably reading too. Very, very weak choices over here. I tell her, I'm not good at swimming. Do you have a photo of you swimming? Do you have a photo of you swimming? Again, I want to see photos of these people. I want them to go to that extra effort and have to find pictures and pretend it's them. So... Um, she asks what I'm good at. Oh, I'm good at cycling and boating. I have my own yacht. I go sailing on the weekend. Of course, here I am. I got to portray myself as being rich and someone with a lot of money to scam. So she asked me for some photos. I show, show her like a stock picture of like some middle-aged dude looking at some yachts or whatever. And I use my fake profile picture that I created um, uh, for the other scammer. 
And I said, that's me. How about a picture of you? And she says, when is this photo? I think it's been a long time. Because, you know, I used a film grain uh, filter on top of this photo to make it look a bit more realistic. So she's obviously like sees that. So I just tell her I'm, I'm into, you know, using old school cameras and film cameras. And it's actually a very recent photo. It just looks old, etc. So she gives me a couple of compliments and sends me a picture of herself. Okay. So then she sends me this like sexy by the pool in a bikini type photo. Now, this, of course, is a big part of these scams is they like to target men because it's very easy to, um, you know, get men to, for lack of a better word, uh, simp, <laughs> you know, for a pretty girl. It's very easy. Throw a couple of pictures of a pretty girl, make them think that there's a chance, and you could pretty much drag them along by their testicles anywhere. So anyway, <laughs> I just say, wow, that looks like fun. Where is that? It looks great to which I don't actually get a reply other than thanks. You see, it's difficult to get information. They're not going to volunteer any information. So I just go through the usual banter because she keeps asking, what are you doing? I tell her what I'm doing, ask her what she's doing. I just went to the gym. I said, oh, make sure you drink a lot of water. To which she replies, I thought this is kind of interesting. Women are made of water. So I drink a lot of water every day. <laughs> okay, so women are made of water, apparently. Um, I'm pretty sure that's everybody it has a very high percentage of water in their bodies, but uh, apparently it's women are made of water. What, what, okay, anyway, let's move on. Um, so I tell her that I'm busy freeing up some money for investments, and then she starts to ask if I have verified my Coinbase's identity information. Because when you create a, a, a Coinbase account, you have to verify it with your real ID and your social security number and stuff for tax reasons, right? It's not just as simple as opening an account. And I've done that previously. Like I said, I have a Coinbase account. So I tell her yes. And uh, she says, install the, the app, etc., etc. I go through all the steps. And then she says, if you have time, I'll show you how to buy USDC by wire transfer. Uh, so I ask her, what's USDC? And it's basically, for those of you who don't know, it's um, a USD coin. It's like a Bitcoin, but it's a different one. It's got the same value as a US dollar. And the scammers really like to use USDC. So if you see something about using USDC, be careful. So I ask her how to buy it. So she says to give screenshots. Now, of course, I'm very careful with these screenshots. I make sure it shows none of my personal information, nothing that they can gain any information about me from or information in my account. So I just take very close up shots, which of course really pisses her off, as you'll see. So I follow through with pretty much everything she's saying all the time, making sure she can't see any of my personal information. I show her that I've linked it to my bank account, to my Chase checking account. And um, I ask her, how much should I add? To which she says, add five to $10,000. Now that's a lot of money. And just imagine you actually went through with this and you followed the scammer and you put in $5,000 or $10,000 even and lost it in, a, in an instant, that'd be a bloody disaster. I don't think anyone these days has got 10 grand to throw away. I certainly don't. So I, I back off a little bit. I'm like, well, you know, uh, I would like to add a little less to first try it out, test the waters. Can I add $1,000? She's like, okay. So I actually do. I purchased $1,000 of, uh, well, I transferred $1,000 into Coinbase. Now, once your money is in Coinbase in dollars, you can then go and buy cryptocurrency, various different types, of course. Next, she tells me that I have to register a short-term contract delivery platform account and transfer Coinbase funds into it. Now this is where the scam starts. She diverts me to a very professional looking, although if you've got a trained eye, you'll be able to see that it's a bunch of nonsense, um, website, which by the way, has since been taken down. So I go ahead and I create an account on this website. Okay, so I'm playing along. I've got my $1,000 in, in Coinbase. I've created an account on this fake btcbox.app website that they had there. Um, and she's getting excited now. And she says later she'll tell me how to do it. I tell her, okay, sure. And I keep delaying, you see, because now there's no way I'm going to transfer my real money over to this fake ass website, which I can tell is fake. I know it's fake. There are spelling mistakes. If you look closely enough, there's all sorts of nonsense that tips me off that this was a a uh, Chinese made website using machine translation and so on and just random, you know, data point images from around the web and stuff. It's just 
really, really fake. And I know that if I transfer my money into that, it's gone. So I'm just delaying and delaying. Every morning she's sending me a good morning text because of course she wants to keep me on the line here. She knows I've got the money and I'm ready to transfer it, right? I'm getting a little annoyed. I ask her, oh, so you've been to the gym today. That's great. Um, I like to do a lot of cardio. Staying so healthy is great. You know, can I see a photo of you at the gym? Again, I'd like to see if this is the same person. So again, I get a photo of, you know, a sexy girl in the gym. Now, of course, this is not the same person that we saw trying to sell the cream to us earlier, the previous week or month ago, whatever it was. A completely different person. This proves it. But this does look similar to the person in the bikini. So they're using the same photos from the same person. Now, whether this is the person or not, I highly doubt that this is her. But at the very least, she's using someone else's photos. And we'll find out later that this is actually a woman. It's not a, a dude sitting there pretending to be a woman. This is actually a woman that they're using here. But I highly doubt that this person in the pictures is her. So I give her some garbage compliments. She gives me some garbage compliments back like, uh, you must be a qualified sailor. Mm. Can your yacht sail far away? And I'm like, yeah. You know, during this entire thing that I did, I invited her to come on yachts. I invited her to go to the Ritz-Carlton uh, to drinks. Because she said she's in L.A. So I looked up, like, what's the most fancy place to go for drinks on a Friday night in L.A.? And I thought, well... How about the Ritz-Carlton? So I kept inviting her. I'm like, hey, my company's going for drinks. Why don't you come along? You can tell me about crypto. You can come join. And of course, every single time, there's some or other excuse about not turning up. And that's because she's not in America. She's in bloody Burma. I know for a fact that she's not here. Anyway, there's some hilarious slip-ups that she made. For instance, remember, she's still pretending to be Korean here. And uh, we we're talking about breakfast because she wants me to invest. She keeps trying to make me find time to sit down with her and move this money over, right? So she keeps bothering me. Oh, do you have time today? I'm like, yeah, but I'm just going to have my breakfast first. She's like, oh, what do you like for breakfast? I say that, um, you know, I like uh, English, full English breakfast. She says, that's pretty good. I prefer Chinese style breakfast. Yeah, well, there we go. Again, proving that you're not Korean. Pretty sure you're not Korean. In fact, I 100% know you're not Korean. Anyway, again, the time difference. I am basing all of this off of LA, Pacific Standard Time, because I told her I'm in LA. So whenever she wants to meet, I'm like, yeah, let's do this at about, um, you know, 1.30. And then she contacts me at like 3 or something. And this is where I really frustrate her and she starts to make some very, very big mistakes. Okay. First of all, she wants me to copy this wallet address. Because what you do is, according to them, is you take this wallet address, right? and you copy it, you go into Coinbase, you transfer to this address. So she wants me to copy this number. So I say to her, okay, let me write it down. I'm just now at this point just messing with her. She's like, you can click on it. Don't write it down yourself. It will be wrong. You click it and it will be copied. Don't write it manually. So say, okay, I clicked it, but I don't know where it went. You right click and paste will come out. Now open Coinbase. I say, okay, I will open Coinbase. Okay, I'm in Coinbase now. What do I do? Buy Bitcoin? Because <laughs> she's like, haven't you already purchased USDC? She really wants me to get this USDC. So I said, no, I deposited $1,000, remember, but I didn't buy anything. So she's like, yes, send me pictures. So I send her a picture of my money in there. She's like, not here, all screens. So I go, I'm looking for this, right? She's like... Click here to select USDC. Okay, next. So I just pretend that I'm, I'm buying this, you know. Um, and it gets to a point where she's like, the address I taught you to copy just now, use that. So I say, somehow it isn't working. Maybe I must type it. She says, you can right click and paste. I say, I tried, but it didn't work. She says, control plus V paste. I say, okay, I'll try that. And I send her this picture. This plus, you know, control plus V. I'm really messing with her. No need to press plus. Okay, so control and then V. She says yes. So I send her two separate photos. Me first pressing control and then me pressing V. Ah, this must have been so infuriating. <laughs> She's like, you have to press at the same time. Oh, at the same time? Okay, I pressed them, but nothing happened. Yes, 
And then here's where she really slips up. Look, she put, she gave me the address. Now, I'm not sure if you were paying attention earlier, but the screenshots that I sent to her, I purposefully cut off the address. There's no way that she would have my personal wallet address on that scam site. So this is incredible. She has now sent me my supposedly personal uh, wallet address on the scam site, which she doesn't know. Because she's so frustrated with me, with me messing around, not pretending I don't know how to copy and paste, she's just like, screw it, I will send him the, the number here on WhatsApp, and then he can copy and paste it in. So, once again, just proves that she is a big part of the scam. She's definitely in on running the scam website, if she knows what this so-called private wallet address of mine is without me telling her. I just frustrate her, tell her I don't know how to do it from my phone. She says to do it from the PC. You get where this is going. So it goes on and on and on. In fact, it goes on for another month or so of this back and forth. She keeps telling me, you know, what a good investment it is. She keeps saying it's in, you've got your stuff in there. You've got your money. Now you need to transfer it. Have you done it yet? How was your day? What was your dinner like? You know, every day just pushing. Have you done it yet? Have you sent the money over, et cetera, et cetera. So now I decide, you know what, let's just put an end to this because I know what the intentions are here. Let's see what I can do if I really just kind of push her. I said, hi, I want to get to know you better so we can invest together. She says, aren't we getting to know each other? There's no need to waste my time. So, you know, here it's all coming to a head. I say, it seems like all you're interested in is forcing me to sign up to your website. I was very interested when you seemed friendly and nice. Then she says, invest a thousand dollars, fuck you for two months. <laughs> Obviously, she's really pissed off that I've wasted her time for two months here. I have over 500,000 to invest. This is me. A thousand was just a test. I don't want to make such a huge risk with my investment money. She says, not even interested in making money. There's no point in living. Now, okay, I got I to gotta be honest with you. This whole fascination and worship of money is a very big part of Chinese, modern Chinese culture. And it's showing through right here. So I say, I already have money. She says, don't be a pussy around here. <laughs> so I say, so you're a man? Because at this point, I suspected this is a man I'm talking to. She says, a thousand is just a test. Do you have a test all the time in here? F your mother. So I said, why are you so rude? She says, I am a mother. And then she sent me this. Who are you? What the fuck? <laughs> so I say, <laughs> I'm surprised. I really am surprised. I was telling my office staff how nice you were. They all expected you to join us for Friday drinks and dinner at the Ritz-Carlton. She says, half a million dollars is also very rich. I spend millions of dollars a month. So I say, I guess you must know this. She says, you can go now. So I send her this. This is a, a screenshot of the Chinese government's campaign to crack down on scammers just like her. They have this huge campaign right now to, to bring these scammers back from Burma and these uh, bordering countries because these guys have been targeting Chinese people. And because of that, they've decided enough is enough. And they're actually going in and, and getting them extradited and bringing them back and making them face charges. So she says, stop texting me. So I tell her, Gun Kai, Pan, which means, you know, F off you pig butchering scammer. She says, you're effing funny, shitty stuff, roll. I don't know what roll is supposed to mean, but whatever. Um, so I said, which means, do you think you can scam us Chinese people? Because now I'm pretending to be Chinese. And I told her, you know, which is the very common Chinese insult that just means like your, uh, what, what would the proper translation to that be? I guess it's like, um, hope your mom dies, basically. Then she says, what did I lie to you about? <laughs> to which she sent me some pretty nasty insults like, you know, hope your whole family dies, F you, saying, saying some more nasty things about my mom, why don't you go F your mom, that kind of thing. And of course she ghosted me because now she's worried. She's been speaking to me as if I'm a dumb foreigner in America and all of a sudden I'm speaking Chinese to her, she's replying to me in Chinese, she knows I know what's up. And this whole time she's been played and I've wasted her time for two months, it's great. It shows you exactly how these people work. So I hope that this has given you some insight into how these pig butchering scams work. Now, of course, there are plenty of variations of this, but it's a very 
big industry in China. And what happens is you get these massive call centers of scammers that get set up just outside the border of China. Well, number one, they get um, unfettered access to the internet because they don't have to worry about a censored internet, so it's easier for them. Number two, they can skirt a lot of local laws in China that could get them into trouble. And number three, they can scam Chinese people as well with relative impunity. Because if you get caught scamming Chinese people in China, you face serious repercussions from the law. But if you're not within the borders of China, well, you know, it's very difficult for them to put it on you. So I hope you enjoyed this very interesting tale of a scammer called Salad. Salad, you and your colleagues, wherever you are, I hope the biggest misfortune befalls you because you people are taking advantage of vulnerable people, you're taking advantage of weak people, and you are absolutely disgusting. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Unlike Salad and her colleagues, stay awesome. Who are you at the fuck? <laughs>